working capital. So if we take a look at this first off, this is where we're going to start out as of the beginning of the problem here. We have the beginning balances and we can see that we have our current assets, which are adding up to, if we take a look at our worksheet here, that includes the cash, the accounts receivable, the allowance, which is reducing the current assets by the 62. So the 80 plus the 150 minus the 62. Uh, and then the inventory is included in current assets, current assets being fairly quick uh, liquid assets, meaning they're going to be converted to cash fairly readily. Uh, and that is why, of course, machinery would not be included in current assets. So then we're going to have uh, the quick assets, which, of course, will include the cash, the accounts receivable, the allowance. We're not going to include the uh, machine, the inventory in this case, because we're restricting it to a more uh, restricted and more liquid type of accounts. So the current assets then add up to that 300. The quick assets add up to the 168. If we take a look at the current liabilities, we only have one liability now, and it's going to be accounts payable. The definition of a current liability, remember, is that it's going to be something that is due within a year. Arbitrary number, we just kind of picked a year as an arbitrary number, but the idea being that uh, we want to pick some kind of shortened number so that we can see if our current assets and our quick assets are uh, liquid enough. Do we have enough liquid assets that will be convertible to cash to, of course, pay off the current liabilities, which are going to be due within a year? And then we can calculate our our ratios and you can see what the ratio is looking like at this point it's going to be the current uh, assets over the current liabilities or r6 uh, over t6 if we did that with a calculator of course we would just be taking the 300,000 divided by the 120,000 that 